Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of American Truck Simulator. So as you can tell, I am back in a day cab. I am in a Kenworth T6800 and uh, we will be hauling this very short little 28 Swift trailer and we're actually hauling 21,000 pounds of office supplies to Sierra Vista. Uh, we're currently in Phoenix, Arizona. So we will be going to one of the two remaining places in Arizona that we haven't been to before. Uh, it's only going to be a 233 mile trip, so it shouldn't take us that long. And while we're going there, I'll talk a little bit about why I'm actually back into a day cab and not driving my uh, my Kenworth uh, W900. But as you can see, this truck has one mile on it. <laughs> That's it. Brand new. Brand new truck. Let's go ahead and get out of here. So... I decided to jump back into a day cab. I've been really wanting to drive a day cab recently. Is after some of the parking things that I've had to deal with, uh, parking spots and stuff like that, uh, in the last couple episodes with just trying to back my trailer in and stuff, and just it being too big and yeah. So I decided to jump into a day cab, but I also decided that uh, the Kenworth. T680 is going to be the new uh, kind of company truck that I use for all the uh, hired drivers. I have not yet to hire another driver. Uh, I only have I own three trucks right now. I'm going to swap out the old truck that I bought for my only employee, which was a Peterbilt. Uh, I'm going to swap that out to this truck here once I'm done using it. Uh, then he can start driving in a Kenworth, and then I'll just start buying a bunch of Kenworths. This one's very basic, just because it's going to be something that I'm not going to drive all the time. It's going to be one for the uh, all the drivers that I hire, but I figured why not give it a shot and drive it. I kind of wanted to get out of uh, the the W900 as well. It was, it's was it been a long time. I've been in that truck for a very long time, so I decided why not. Let's just get out of it, try something else. Get back into one of these cool little uh, sleek trucks. I guess I'm going this way. Yes, I am. All right. So, uh, yeah, we're going to Arizona, or we're in Arizona. We're going to another city in Arizona. I'm trying to to, to discover the last two places in Arizona, so that way I can leave, go back into California because it's been a while since we've been out there. So, yeah. Um, so far, everything is uh, pretty good. I got my car back. Like I said in the last video, my car was being painted. Got my car back. It's awesome. Uh, for the price that it was, the paint job was not that bad. Um, there's a couple little things here and there that I wish they had taken a little more precautions on uh, when they were painting the car. A good example is they, they didn't really mask that much. Um, I found out later on when I was working on my car that they kind of just sprayed like oversprayed onto the uh, bottom of the radiator, you know, like where the ra the radiator uh, kind of shroud is to kind of scoop the air to focus it into the radiator. That was pr practically white. Um, they also, uh, for some reason, didn't cover all my tires all the way. So one of my tires, they uh, like the three are fine, but there's one that has a big overspray spot on the inside, uh, which is fairly annoying uh, because they, you know, should have covered that properly but they didn't so that's just you know great now i gotta figure out how to take paint off a tire which is just like what and then i gotta take the tire off to clean it which is great um and then they 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 had i had a uh, my two spotlights on my doors had these little rubber grommets to kind of help with just keeping like wind and water and stuff out as well as a uh i had a little cap for a hole that was in my trunk that I, you know, had in there because it was a hole. I didn't want things to get into my trunk, like water and whatnot, so I had this little cap. Uh, they lost all those. The little cap and the two, um, and the two, uh, spotlight grommets that are supposed to go on the car, uh, both of those are just lost. The guy was like, oh, I'll, I'll take a look for them and I'll give you a call tomorrow and, uh, you know, hopefully uh, you can come back down and pick them up. Yeah, he never called me back. Uh, <laughs> So that's really nice. I'm really glad. It, it kind of makes me mad that even if I were to pay any amount of money, I feel like anything that would come off that car would need to be labeled or bagged or something where then it is put back on the car. How do you how do you do work on a car, take things off and not put them back on? That just doesn't that doesn't seem right to me. Um, 
so yeah i don't know it's uh it, for the price it really wasn't that expensive uh they did a really good job they got rid of the major problems that i wanted them to get rid of uh and they got the car white which is all that i really cared about there's the major issues were the hood was super uh crow's feet just cracked like crazy so that needed to be totally sanded down to bare metal uh the rear doors have these door trim holes that i needed to be filled because i decided to not run door trim because i just think crown vicks look better without door trim uh and then also there was a couple holes in the in the uh, roof that i had them take care of and then they painted the car white so oh and they got rid of a bunch of little things and dents all over so um, yeah, for the price, they got done what I needed them to get done, which is good. But I just feel like there's some things where they just, you know, it's like, why, why, why did you remove that and not put it back? Or why didn't you mask or cover my tires more? Or, you know, also they could have mentioned, I'm pretty sure someone might have saw it. Maybe they didn't see it. I don't know. But I just feel like they should have just, a couple little things should have been better than they were. But for the most price, for the most price, what? for the most part... Uh, the price wasn't that bad, the job wasn't that bad. So obviously if I were to spend a lot more money, the work would be a lot more better. Um, but I didn't want to go crazy and spend a shitload of money on a paint job, I just wanted to get the car changed and go with as budget of an option as I could. So, for it being a budget option, not bad. I really do like it. It looks really good. The paint is super smooth. The only thing is now I have to deal with my car smelling like paint, which the interior of my car smells like paint. So every time I get into it, it's just paint, 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 just paint. That's all I smell all the time is paint. Uh, <laughs> so it's going to be nice when that kind of wears off and it kind of gets back to just being a car again and not something that's super fresh paint. It's kind of getting there slowly, just taking time. But... Man, we are moving it right now. This little 28 trailer is not very heavy. Um, but yeah, so it, it was a, it was a fairly it was a nice uh, it was a nice thing that got done, which is nice. So it's it's good. It's out of the way. I had a great week driving the Miata. That car is so much fun. I'm really glad that I was you know kind of forced to drive it to kind of you know get myself to realize, hey, this thing is awesome. Um, so that kind of pushes me to want to get the Miata finished in one color and not be multicolored. Um, that is literally the main question. There's like three main questions I get on my Instagram all the time. Uh, my Instagram is mainly just car photos because that's kind of what I do. That's kind of what we do on the weekend is just car related things. So lots of car photos. But for the Miata, the main question that I get asked a million times is, do you ever plan on getting it one color? Yes, I don't want to drive a multicolored car. <laughs> it's just kind of how it is right now. Um, uh oh, I wonder if we're going to be able to get in front of this guy. Mm, we got to exit here. Oh, we got to exit here. This is not good. Not good, not good, not good, not good, not good. Oh, he's exiting too. Okay, we're just going to cut in front of him. Mm, brakes, 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 brakes. I am full on the brakes right now. Okay, I'm just going to hang out on the shoulder real quick. Actually, you know what? We're just going to wait for this light to turn green. Uh, it's green. All right, I'm just going to go. Sorry, everybody. I really tried to hit the brake. You're lucky I didn't even... I didn't kill you all. So, uh, but yeah, so it, it makes me want to get the Miata done. I don't like it being not one color, but it's just kind of how it turned out. There was, depending on what you want to do to a car, there's certain things that you deem more necessary. And for me, getting the car set up to a point where I think it's going to be good enough to paint is what I wanted. I didn't, there was a lot of body modifications that would have destroyed a good paint job. So if I had got it painted and then I did some of the things that I've done to that car, it would have destroyed the paint job. It wouldn't have been worth it. The paint would have been totally useless. So. I'm trying to get those things out of the way, get all the little trim bits and pieces and everything that I think I want to have painted or, you know, whatever. Uh, so that way that car would be ready for paint. At this point, it's practically ready for paint. Um, and I really do want to paint it. It does It does bother me, it being uh, multicolored. Uh, the second question I get asked all the time uh, is on my Crown Victoria, which is, is that legal to drive? Yes. And it actually kind of scares me that there's so many people out there that don't quite know their laws, their local laws about what they can and can't do. I mean, 
I definitely know the laws when it comes to what I can and can't do in terms of like Crown Victoria related, but that's also kind of falls into, you know, somewhat common sense. I know some states are different, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's a little scary that some people are just like, I don't, you know, Crown Vicks are illegal. I get that a lot. People go, you can't drive this. This is illegal. And it's like, how is a car illegal? It's a car. It has wheels, you know, it has doors, windows, it motor drives. It's a car. doesn't matter how it looks. The only thing that's illegal on my car is my window tent on the front. And that's only because I just don't believe in the window tent law. But I don't know. It's just uh, maybe it's different for state. Some different states. I know it's it's all dependent on county, too. I mean, it's not even just states. Different counties have different um, requirements for you know, what you can and can't do to a vehicle, but it's all just looking up what your local laws are. But for me and most of California and most of the country, as far as I'm aware, uh, Crown Victoria's are perfectly legal um, in every sense of the meaning in terms of also having spotlights and ram bars and all that stuff. All that stuff is perfectly legal because if you drive around on the road, just take a minute and look at some of the cars that you're passing. You ever see a uh, Jeep that has spotlights? Yep. You ever see a truck that has a big, you know, push bar, ram bar sort of thing on the front? Yep. Same thing. It's just on a Crown Vic. It's no different. They're off-road lights. I did, I did air quotes. Off-road lights. Um, obviously, you can't use them on the public roadway. And uh, they are... Um, it's just a push bar on the front like a truck. So, yeah. And the third thing, before I end this episode from backing in which this is a really short episode again. Um, I keep thinking these are going to take longer than they do, and they don't. Um, But the third thing is... um, I get asked if I'm a police officer. No. I got asked so many times, I even put it on my profile, because I was just like, no. Yet, I still get asked, so... (laughs) Oh, this is so much better backing in with a... uh, day cab and actually being able to see what you're doing pull a little bit more forward there we go just want to make sure we're completely lined up ah that's so much better and done look at that super easy to do a uh (laughs) a day cab with a 28 backing in just perfectly in there that's awesome all right let's go ahead and drop the trailer uh that took a lot shorter than I wanted it to. Uh, 229 miles it only took us four hours and three minutes which in game was supposed to take us over six so, and we weren't speeding. We were doing under the speed limit. Um, $4,700, which is pretty good. 262 XP. We're getting within about uh, 500, less than 500 uh, XP away from rank 22. Um, I don't want to end this episode with it being as short as it is, just because I've done that before. So I'm hoping maybe we can get maybe one to San Simon really quick, like a super little quick journey over there, which I don't think is going to be... Yeah. No, uh, no, looks like the closest place is back to Phoenix. Uh, we don't want to do that. So why don't we go ahead and just find a place to sleep then? And, uh, we can, what is this question mark? What is that question mark? Oh, is that a recruitment center? Also, is there even a place to sleep in this city? Yeah, way up there. Okay, interesting. Hmm. All right, well, we're going to drive past this recruitment center, and then we'll go up here and get some sleep and maybe find a new load, and that way the episode isn't uh, 13 minutes long. (laughs) So we have a little bit of a longer period of time. So, but yeah, so I just get the the, the reoccurring questions are those three questions, Um, but it's just... Yeah, I just, just look, you know, if you're not sure, there's a lot of people out there that that say they want to get Crown Victorias, but they're just afraid. I don't know why people are afraid. Um, I don't get messed with by the police. I don't. If anything, that car makes me have more conversations with the police. Um, and not in terms of, like, they're pulling me over and I got to prove my innocence or something. Um, but in terms of just... You see a cop at a coffee shop, he sees what kind of car you're driving, and I can't see the light, and uh, he asked you, he's like, oh, hey, what's this? You know, and you have a conversation. That's happened a couple times. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't be afraid to drive a car. Obviously, you could have a situation that there's a possible police impersonator or something like that in the area, and obviously you're going to be looked at because you're driving a Crown Victoria, but if you're not doing it, you're not going to go to jail for it. <laughs> you know? Obviously, there's there's certain things that they're looking for, and as long as you don't have those things, red and blues in your car, even if they're off, mm, I don't recommend that. Uh, just because there's a chance that a cop could turn your lights on and see that they're red and blue, and then the million questions start rolling in about why, what are you doing, what's up, what's going on. So, not that I've ever had red and blues, but it's just a pretty obvious thing of... I've heard about some people that have had red and blues in their car and getting pulled over, and yeah, they just get the third degree, so... Um, but if you just have a standard Crown Vic with, like, spotlights and ram bar and stuff, you're not going to get messed with. At this point in time, the Crown Victoria isn't that used of a police vehicle anymore. It's not mainly, I mean, not many departments have Crown Victorias. Obviously, you know, some still do. They're trying to get them cycled out and everything. But in a couple years, you know, the odds of a police department owning a Crown Victoria are going to be very minimum. Um, even right now, it's gotten to the point where... Crown Vicks aren't really, like, super active anymore. I know all, like, God, I don't know, the five cities around me, I don't even think I've seen, I see, like, one Crown Vic. I'm pretty sure uh, I've seen two, three, three separate cities have had about one Crown Vic that I've seen in the past, I don't know, eight months or so nine months, ten months, maybe even a year. You know, the Crown Vicks aren't being used. They're cycling them out. So, it'll just get to the point where you can drive a Crown Vic and just enjoy it and nobody thinks you're a cop. Obviously, it's going to have Frambar and spotlights and all that shit, but, you know, they're not being used as much as they were, so you're a little more uh, in the open, I guess. Not It's not like it was a couple years ago when you would drive a Crown Vic and all the departments were still driving Crown Vics. Obviously, people would go, oh, Crown Vic, cop car. Nowadays, they go, Crown Vic? What about all the utilities? Yeah, so. But, uh, yeah, I would, I would just look at your local laws, um, see what you can and can't do. That's just the best thing to do. And if you don't know, go to the police department and say, hey, what do you recommend that I do? Um, we can't go in there. That is an exit only. So, yeah, it's not nothing, you know, driving a Crown Vic is not illegal. I do want to get the Miata one color, and I want to do that soon. And I am not a police officer. <laughs> Just to handle all the Instagram comments that I get. Um, ah, okay. Let's just pull into here and uh, get some sleep. So hopefully tomorrow... A job will spawn and uh, can get us to San Simon, which is the last place that we need to visit in Arizona. And uh, then we can take off and head back to California or Nevada or who knows. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. We will start the next episode in this same spot. And like I said, hopefully we can find a place to San Simon. And then uh, maybe after that, we'll head on out after uh, we'll we'll head on out and leave Arizona and uh, head back to some of the places we've been to before that we haven't been to in a very long time. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, remember to hit the like button. It really does help me out. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.